look at some simple examples of uh, Mobius functions. We've already seen that uh, when p is uh, the non-negative integers with the usual partial order, then mu p i j is uh, 1 if i is equal to j minus 1 if i plus 1 is equal to j and 0 otherwise. Well, another example that I had looked at in the very first lecture of this course was that if you take p equals uh, the square of non-negative pairs of non-negative integers uh, less than or equal to where uh, we define that i j is less than or equal to i prime j prime if and only if i is less than or equal to i prime and j is less than or equal to j prime. And in this case, you can show that mu p i j i prime j prime is equal to, of course, it's 1 if i j is equal to i prime j prime. But it's also 1 in another case, i plus 1 is equal to i prime and j plus 1 or maybe I can write it as i plus 1 comma j plus 1 is equal to i prime j prime. It is minus 1 if i plus 1 j is equal to i prime j prime or i j plus 1 is equal to i prime j prime prime and uh, it is zero otherwise okay we'll see uh, another way to derive this formula but for now i'll uh, let you uh, uh, do this as an exercise um, let's look at uh, one more very important case uh, which is that p is uh, the power set of some finite set So we look at all subsets of x and we look at uh, this as a partially ordered set under containment and then I claim that mu of s comma t is equal to minus 1 to the power t minus s if uh, s is contained in t and is of course 0 otherwise. So this Mobius function only takes the values plus 1 or minus. In fact, you see there seems to be a common phenomenon that uh, many Mobius functions uh, only take values uh, plus 1 and minus 1. In fact, uh, it may be a while before we see one which doesn't. So uh, let's, let's prove this one. Um, so uh, we'll use some of the uh, properties that we used uh, learned of Mobius function. So firstly, let's look at this interval s comma t. Okay, so this consists of all the subsets that contain s and are contained in t. So this is the same as uh, if you just remove s from each of those subsets, this is isomorphic to the post set, uh, the interval empty set to t minus s. And so it suffices to show, so if we, if we call this uh, x now, then it suffices to show that mu of phi comma x is equal to minus 1 to the cardinality of x. And uh, we'll do this using uh, the equation for uh, the Mobius function, the, the recursive equation that we had for Mobius function. So it says that mu of phi comma x is equal to minus summation all post subsets uh, y that lies strictly, bit, uh, which strictly contain the empty set and weakly contain uh, Uh, that strictly contain y and no sorry that weakly contain the empty set and are strictly contained in x so all subsets in the interval except x 
mu of uh, phi comma y. Okay, so we had proved this earlier when I defined the Mobius function and uh, we will induct on uh, the cardinality of x. So what do you get? So you get mu of phi comma x is equal to, now this y can have cardinality anything between uh, 0 and let's call this n. So y can have cardinality anything between 0 and n. And so what we get is some uh, k goes from 0 to not n, n minus 1. And uh, these post sets phi comma y, this only depends on the cardinality of y. So these are all uh, only dependent on the cardinality of y. And so this is, uh, of course, uh, uh, independent of the choice of y, but how many subsets of size k are there? Well, there are n choose k subsets of size k and uh, by induction hypothesis, uh, we have that this is, uh, this, this Mobius function is just minus 1 raised to the cardinality of y, which is k. But uh, the binomial theorem tells us that uh, 0, which can be written as 1 minus 1 raised to the power n is uh, equal to summation k goes from 0 to n, uh, n choose k minus 1 to the power k. So what that means is that this mu of uh, phi x has to be equal to minus 1 to the power n because that's the only term that's uh, you just take the last term of this binomial expansion out from the left side and you get exactly uh, that this is equal to minus 1 to the power n. 